Hey everyone, I have Takuya here with me and I'm doing another Proto Pro with him. First off, congratulations on the win. It's very exciting. Thank, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so uh, my first clip here is a very simple one. Um, I'm basically gonna ask how you felt the lane went against Jensen. You guys did a couple games to each other. They're doing a lot of pressure on you. Is this something that you expected to happen or just your general thoughts about the lane? Um, I mean, in this matchup, I should win one v one and the only way to like get control to me is to fight me. So obviously it was going to happen. Uh, this dive, for example, I, I knew it was coming because Progress was in fog, Lulu went in fog. We were like, hmm, it's coming, you know? So I, I just stayed there, blew my flash, which is fine because they have ulti coming soon. Uh, yeah. Gotcha, cool. Yeah, so then I have another clip here. As a mid laner myself, when I was watching this, uh, I was definitely very curious as to why you decided to give up blue, especially since it's a Lee Sin. Uh, do you have any commentary on that? Just something? Did he ask for it? Anything uh, you want to say? Uh, I mean, Magic will ask for it, so I guess he has an, he had an item or something. Ah. Uh, I plan to reset soon anyway, so I didn't mind too much, even though I'm a bit low mana right now. Uh, yeah, like real, right, right here, my game plan was just to to farm a wave, base, mm -hmm. get my item, get my boots, and then we can start playing together. Gotcha. So you're a pretty nice mid laner then. Yeah, getting I am. Up blue is nice. I am. I like that. I like that. <laughs> so then my next clip here is going to be about 19 minutes into the game. There hasn't been much action from you for like the last 10 minutes. And my question is, are you feeling pressured to make plays at all? Since a lot of people say Ari is a huge playmaker, there hasn't been much going on. Can you just tell me about how it feels right now in the game? Um, I, I mean, I feel like with how we play, we like to win the game methodically, play for the dragon, story rotate. So yeah, you know, I don't. I could, didn't get to be in a lot of actions, but I'm pushing my waves, and we have first po we had the first position on the neutrals objective, and that's like the main thing we want with this draft. Gotcha. So then here we have a play here. I'll pause it really quick. Um, if you were given the chance to do this again, how would you like to do it differently? Because I'll play out the clip here, and then obviously it doesn't go ideally, right? Yeah. So then I'll start it back in the beginning. Yeah. Tell me about why, what you guys are trying to do here and then what your kind of goal in this fight is. Um, okay, I mean, in this fight, I think the first mistake was I was uh, holding this stroke here. Mm -hmm. Then I eat and they don't. Oh, hit. a bit before this, right? Yeah. So then I had no E, so that was a bit. Just before right. this, I used I my E. And then they could step in. So at that moment, I told my team, Gus, I, I can't stop them. They're, they're entering, we need to turn. Mm -hmm. And so we turn. My team goes on the left side, they, they flash away, I try to get the Zeri, and they react really quickly, like Lulu was just waiting for me and instantly W, and I failed my E-flash. Um, yeah, I, I, I could play it a bit slower, considering my team was winning on the other side too, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, it was basically two mistakes in a row, you know? Gotcha, I mean, it worked out in the end, because we'll have a last clip over yeah. here, where you guys do do a second Baron, and it runs a lot better here. So before this goes out, can you tell me about why you guys decided to do a Baron here, and just run about, uh, tell me about it? Uh, I mean, right there, we just have mid pushed in, they didn't react to the wave, so we're just like, all right, we're gonna go, go take the position, and cut them, and like, you know, like this, yeah, like, like this. You can make it bigger, but it, actually, I cannot yeah. make it bigger. Make okay, it so like, basically, this position is really scary for them. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Really scary for them. And so it, it's, it always gives us an edge on the Nash, you know? Ah, and they don't have wards. I know they can't really step there, so they have to like all go in this little thing. Mm -hmm. and this area this, over here. Yeah, and this one want to turn. And Lulu was no flash. I think she overstepped there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how we punished and secured the objective. Gotcha. So then that's all the clips I have for that. Do you have any general feelings about uh, playing against Jensen or how you feel about against other mid laners? Um, I mean, this game, for example, I think he played a bit too cocky. I mean, he, disres he disrespected, me, disrespected me sorry, a bit in the early mm -hmm. game. Uh, so I got to like chunk him, get a big good CS lead, got my wave bouncing to me. Mm -hmm. But then I, yeah, I entered on the gank and I, and I, and I got killed. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, lane was pretty smooth, I would say. Gotcha. But this is how it's supposed to work, first level, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So thank you for taking the time to thank come you. here. Congratulations on the win as well. Um, that will do it for us. It's time for CLG for Team Liquid. And Contract is sharing his thoughts on CLG and Spring Split. Spring Split definitely was pretty terrible for us, uh, especially for me. I think I was not playing individually well, and um, it, it definitely showed and hurt my team's play, for sure. But uh, you know, I definitely used the time wisely that I had to, during this offseason to really level up my play. And, um, you know, I think it's showing and, you know, I'm very excited to continue improving uh, this split.
Welcome back to the LCS and the State Farm Analyst Desk. It's CLG and Team Liquid facing off after surprising losses for both squads only yesterday. And before we dive into that matchup, I just really quickly wanted to point out that I think Takui is the first pro player to ever actually use a Telestrator. Yeah! Number yeah. one, which I love to see. Number two, though, I hope you all took notes, okay? Because I think he's already doing it better than at least half of the on-air team. So, so no circles, notes, right? We have to up. use the actual just, lines, just right? Just get it right, you know? That's okay. all I'm saying. I understand. Get now, right. on, right. you're on Free note here. Free and draw for everything. Yeah, I remember that sleeve yesterday? Uh, yeah. What problem is that great. called? Okay. <laughs> Wasn't that hilarious? CLG Team Liquid Honda, let's talk about it. And let's talk particularly about the junglers, because we just heard from contracts, and I think uh, it, in large part, a lot of people have considered him to be playing much better better mm -hmm. here so far in summer but he's obviously going to have his work cut out for him against one of our you know long-standing prolific junglers in Santorin. yeah i just thought this was interesting because these are the two junglers in the lcs one two that have the highest uh going into today i don't know if this has changed but they were True. so far mm -hmm. up that it i don't think it has yet um had the highest team jungle proximity and i do think it speaks to how much they want to play not only around their lanes but around the team fights that both of these teams are having so regardless of what happens we've talked in particular about contracts and we kind of heard from him in um that interview we just had about how much he wants to help his team affect the early game and now that they're communicating a little bit better it looks a lot better as i hand things off to raz i just want to remind viewers at home who might be unfamiliar with that jungle proximity stat as it pertains to the whole team that's the percentage of time in the laning phase that the jungler is spending within a certain distance of any of their teammates yep. yes. about a thousand units exactly and you know speaking more widely about these players santorin has had an incredible year so far and how he plays around his team um and especially his bot lane the fact that last uh, game was pretty really poor from the team i think is just mm -hmm. an aberration and the expectation is just that santorin has always been a strong jungler in in playing around his lanes mid and bot lane more uh in particular meanwhile for contracts this has just been a real glow up for him um the last time he's been playing this well was when he was on evil geniuses and had those outright like strong performances spring split was a real flat point and so this has been a real uh, for me, shocker that he's been playing as well as he is in this split. Uh, Raz mentions that previous loss being an aberration, Jack. Mm. Uh, I want to take a look at schedules yeah. for, for both Let's of these teams it. as we discuss really how much anyone should index into those losses. I had to check myself when I was actually writing 10 thoughts this week about the strength of schedule because both COG and Team Liquid have had similarly strengthed schedule yes and mm -hmm. i was discrediting cog for having a good start while still lauding tl with a lot of credit but actually they're the same in yes. terms of summer split mm -hmm. which makes this game even more important and also to, to raz's point i am going to quote captain flowers from yesterday uh -oh. Is, oh i love it uh oh here we go uh, quote you can't pick a do nothing comp and then do nothing <laughs> I think that's very How pertinent. did I miss that? It's that's very good. pertinent to what TL did yesterday because, and it's what they have to do better against COG today. If they're going to push the tempo, if they're going to come into summer split and be more aggressive, they have to take risks. Well, and they themselves said that they recognize this going in, right? The two things they laid out as a blueprint for themselves were we want to play more around bot lane, we want to be a bot lane focused team, and we want to be more proactive early. Yes. And especially if you are going to be picking lanes in bot that have the push you absolutely need to play around them with yep. a pick that can affect lanes early yeah and this is the test i really think this is the test especially after the loss that they had versus 100 thieves it was a great game for them um they just need to play a lot more active. CLG is a team that is going to check you. They're confident players. I yeah. want to see that at a Team Liquid. There has still been so much resistance, I think, to just solidifying and being comfortable calling CLG a top team here yeah. in summer. I do think that this is the game that changes that if they're able Ew. to take the victory. While we may not get to see CLG in the studio this week, they're still delivering us a fun game that everyone at home can play to take a look. We are being tested on how much Twitter we consume. We are being tested on how much Twitter we consume. I would say Greg is the front runner compared to you guys. Yeah, you have a lot of Twitter. No open. way. Yeah. It's part of the job. I am Twitter. Yeah. Um, some people might consume more than others here. That, that's Luger, by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this was about Lost. You tweeted yeah. after this hashtag. Yeah, copy Mike Kaiser. Copy Mike Kaiser, man. <laughs> Uh, this, this, this is Fox. Yeah, Fox. yeah, that's you. No, no, no. That's yeah. you. No, it's you. It's Man, this is called the contract. 
I'm pretty sure it's you, but maybe yeah, it's me. Yeah, it's me. I don't know who the <laughs> it is. It was just. Why is the guy saying it's not him? Welcome back, everyone. Hello, CLG. Hoping to not only consume Twitter, but consume Team Liquid this game. Wow. Just feast off of them. Okay. Because when you kill someone in League, you earn gold. So you are kind of consuming them, like, no matter what champion you're playing. Tom Kench always spits out whatever he consumes. Are they going to spit them out afterwards, too? I think you digest be... some of it, though. Okay. Right? Like, like if you chew gum, you spit out the end. But, like, yeah. all the sugar and, like, whatever, like, was on there. Something has to that. turn into that gold, right? Yeah, so there's exactly. got a little bit of material. There's a little bit of alchemy in that, <laughs> in that gut microbiome. And uh, I'm glad about that. So, yeah, both these teams, by nice. the way, sitting at four and two. Now, a couple of stats that are going to be taken very seriously. Okay. 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 I'm prepped and we're ready about, for we're these about to have a two-week serious break. stats. If Team Liquid lose, they will be in fourth place. Okay. That's a good one. TL fourth place, a good meme. So that meme, for I think, requires like a historical piece to explain now. <laughs> they got fourth place a lot. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty much good, the context. Good explanation. Number they two. What else you got for me? Number two. Uh, Team Liquid uh, are one and two on red side which they are on, and CLG are undef- Oh, sorry, we're backwards, sorry. <laughs> well, I'm doing everything wrong right now. It's Never okay. mind, we've tossed it all away. Forget what I said. Yes, and <laughs> CLG have won uh, up until that point. Uh, CLG are winless on blue yeah. is the problem. They okay. have won all their red side games, I, I think is where you're going for, I right? I somehow thought both teams were on red side, and I'm like, oh my gosh, TL's one and two, and CLG's undefeated on red. Oh. Wow, if only I could both play red side in one game, it'd be a really good stat. That'd be, um, that would, that would be petered cool. out quickly. <laughs> they both start in the same fountain. Yeah, they as, just fight instantly. As, as, as who, which team does the laser kill? Though? Neither. They're, they're both on red they're team. They're both red they team. They just okay. spawn and fight. And, and so the fountain is also healing them the whole time. It's the oh, longest no. level one fight ever. <laughs> you actually can't kill anyone. All right. This is cool. What kind of draft would we have for a level one Instantly Heimerdinger. fountain fight? Um, anyone with like nice ore, like Sona Q would give everyone the buff. Oh, like Velvet, because you oh, infinitely gosh. stack up. Oh, you need someone. level six for that though. Ah, it's level six battle. You're right, you're right. <laughs> Dang. All right, well, let's get into a real draft here. <laughs> Dokla picking up the Wukong for contracts early on. No surprise there. This champion for jungle, constantly banned. It's huge yep. team fighting. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Showing a little bit of a dive possibility, uh, or at least the choice of it there for Team Liquid. And they opt to go for the Zeri instead, which to me, I will always opt for Zeri right now. I think it's insane, especially because Yumi is up. They could go Zeri Yumi. And they also get the Volley Bear, which uh, best early game jungler in the entire game right now with the extra 100 health on those tank mythics. Volley Bear absolutely steamrolls early game, but you have to use it in the early game to yeah. do that. If they don't leverage the Volley Bear to get some early fights, then you scale like a paper you do. bag. Well, yeah. I don't think paperbacks can scale very much. No, they don't. They just kind of fall down. They get punched through sometimes. You know what does scale though? Corky picked up there for Palafox. Uh, I know it is not Ooh. a crowd favorite, but what will get the crowd excited is that the Corky is getting nerfs to the Rockets. Woo! Soon! Corky now! They're on the way! They're on the way! I promise! They're coming in hot. Bjergsen picks up the Swain though as well. <laughs> hey man, what year are we in where CLG are actually basically tied with Team Liquid in the, the, the winning poll? Because for, for years it has been CLG. I, I mean, we're vomiting. in the year where they're also tied in the standings. That's which has not happened in a super long time. Um, maybe pre-franchising yeah. when they were both at the bottom. There was that one split where Tia was ninth. I think yeah. Silge was above them back then. But fair, fair uh, enough. Yeah, it's, I, been okay. a, it's been a rough. I do want to talk about what they're sh what they're already showing in their first three here because this is already showing. Um, you know, even though Corky can scale into poke damage long range later, since you've already locked in Wu Kong and Kalista. Um, those two can't really do the long range team fight. And so it's on Corky yet to throw out some rockets early, but eventually you're gonna have to go into range of this Swain. And so that's why I really like the third pick Swain there from Bjergsen after he already saw the Kalista um, and Wukong is also dive. Uh, Kalista definitely has a difficult time trying to fight around the Swain, especially once you have Zonia's. It's just so much zone control. Definitely agree. On the bands coming through, Renata Glass, the primary pairing we tend to see with Kalista. Gwen going away from yep. the top side. They are constantly targeting the top lane carries that Doko swap and picks. Uh, they frequently make him blind pick for top lane, and I think they will again here as well. But Gwen and Yone, uh, the big two scaling top lane carries that we know CLG are prone to pick for their top side. His overall chance like so far, yeah, two Gwens, or sorry, one Gwen, two Yones, and then yeah, there's Jason Nar, which are not so much that, but you know, they want him onto something a little bit safer, a little bit more docile. So one final bandit come through, Gangplank, maybe Orin. 
We're just getting through safety. Actually, Jace themselves. So uh, maybe opens up blind pick Fiora. Docile. I definitely don't want my top laners to be docile. I don't think I've ever uh, preferred to that description. Unless you're on like Orn or something. No, yeah. even the Orn. Even Orn. I want the Orn. Kinda I want scrapped. the Orn getting some solo kills. I yeah. saw someday do it. It can be done. Yeah. All right, let's see what they pull out here. The Jace uh, Gangplank and Gwen Bands you are talking about. Um, let's see if they, ooh, it's gonna be a for sure um, counter pick for Bwipo. So Big Dokes is gonna have to reveal first. What's it gonna be? Our first top lane champion, yep. and it's not going to be the flex pick Wukong, which technically can be a sure. possibility. But I'm going to say that it's actually a 0% chance. 0% that it is top lane Wukong. I do yes. want to point out, though, that uh, both Whippo and Bjergsen have one game of Swain this split. So Swain is actually flexible right now. True. If they like his matchup in a NAR, it's like, oh, we'll just go here and get a different mid laner since so you didn't ban anything. Definitely a possibility if you want to keep playing for the sort of mid range. Oh, you know what? Fight. You know what? Again, this has happened so many times, and every time there's a blind pick Nar, I try and encourage the opponent team to pick Aurelia. But this is unironically very good Aurelia move here because uh, you can easily send Volibear Ooh. up top side to make that dive happen. Good. I like this CLG. I feel like I've been ahead of other teams in the LCS. They were ahead in the first two weeks because they were playing Seraphim before it was cool. And now she's going to Playing a Moo Moo before it's cool. Guess what? Playing a Moo Moo is almost never cool. Yeah, but a Moo Moo got buffed and they're on to that one. <laughs> and I think a Moo Moo is very strong, especially good with Kalista. The, the hardest difficulty with, with a Moo Moo, and you can ask Hyde this, sometimes you'll just try to get in and you can't land an ulti. We've seen Hyde play Moo <laughs> Jungle. He's missed some flash ults before. Uh, but Banish Toss can miss. No, no, no. Throw him in with Kalista and the flash ult will hit the entire team. You have the engage. Wukong to follow up. Like, Nar could follow up. This is a very, very good team fight engaged by CLG. Yeah, I mean, Amumu support has already been played in LPL and LCK. Um, so we'll see if Poom can follow in their footsteps. Uh, footsteps. I also love it with Kalista, like you're saying. You know, it's just so much more mobility for a champion uh, that does not like to have to waddle around the map. Whippo just answers with the Aatrox, though. Uh, not the, you know, super exciting counter pick that needs to get uh, more kills onto the NAR to have effectiveness. Yeah. Can actually farm it out, no problem. Um, of course, the mini NAR definitely always has to worry about the range Q1 yeah. there for Aatrox and the follow-up. Really ends up being Whippo's fourth most played champion of the year with four picks. He plays a lot of different stuff. That's why four is, 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 is his fourth most played. But yeah, we're gonna have a very fun game here. Who is gonna tie? For second, that is the battle line right now with single game behind EG. If they can find this win, CLG looking good so far. The split team liquid expectations were to be dominant. We'll see if they can get back on that form here. Let's get ready to go. CLG versus team liquid. between CLG and Team Liquid. And the crowd is one-sided in their approach. <laughs> Let's go. Well, I want to have some chance for Amumu because Amumu is a great pick, especially into Zeri, uh, because the part of the bus was to the damage reduction for your E. You put some early points into E for Poom, and you can reduce the damage on all those bullets uh, coming your yes. way. So not only does it have great synergy with Kalista, mm. it also has um, great defense versus specifically the Zeri. Uh, so again, more and more credit to these these drafts from CLG. Uh, you mm -hmm. mentioned it earlier, a big part of their early success this year has been CLG really leaning into getting any sort of draft advantages that they can. Uh, new and exciting picks. They know someone's running after the right as well, so they know, I think that's probably Rakan over there, but they get the late invade. Will be no problem, takes one away, so this could interrupt the passing. Uh, worth noting that with this invade, CLG have actually warded the exit of Raptors for Santorin. So if he goes for an invade right there, that ward, that lets him know, okay, if he's doing red then to invade my jungle, we know right away. We can try to meet him. Palafox could harass, you know, maybe no click comes down to harass, but no. Instead, Santorin says, all right, if you're staying for all three cancels, by the way, he's on wolves right now. 
I don't believe this guy got spotted. So he's getting his Gromp. But Contracts... I, wait. I don't remember the path he took. Maybe that ward came out later and said already passed Con the ward. Contract still has Smite. If he gets over there, he oh can Smite gosh. steal. Wait, he can't. He has Smite. He got Smite. Thank you very much. Yoink. And he's level three already. Yoink. Got his entire jungle. Centaur oh. is one camp. This is actually so insane. What a start for CLG, for Contracts. This kid has no fear, let me tell you. He never, <laughs> sometimes fear is a good thing and it can keep you safe, but a lot of times you can get big advantages if yep. you do not play to it. Invading a volley bear like that, a really controlling and just dismantling Santorin's yep. jungle. Huge, huge stuff here. What a start for CLG. And Contracts has his whole jungle to work with afterwards. Now, Volibear is one of these champions that when you get counter jungled early and you're then forced into this extra time on your hands so you don't have anything on your side of the map to farm, you can force ganks. So now, Contracts has done his part. He's done the invade. He's got Santorum behind. It's up to the rest of the team um, to not fall victim, fall yep. prey to those forced ganks from the Volley Bear and really just make that advantage stick. So some warding from the solo lanes I want to see. Mm -hmm. uh, Trinket wards out at towards Tribrush and towards the ramp uh, from the jungle should yep. keep them safe. Also, Contracts is trying to mirror now uh, jungle quadrants to uh, get back down and uh, answer Santorin. In the next full minute is where it gets interesting because everyone knows Volibear had to go back to the top setting at level three, uh -huh. but he's got a crab minute fight. until anything comes back up. They see the crab fight coming, yeah. and, and Contracts is bouncing back down bottom side to make sure, but uh, Santorin yeah, able, to, able to get it. Yep. And so now that's okay, we now know he just cleared bot site. Okay, he can pressure the bottom lane. They do have a ward for it. Should be relatively safe. But now Jokla knows he's safe for a while. He's going for the force gank. Back he has no time, so he's going to walk around behind bottom. They did have that ward yeah, on the ramp. Know. They should know when they're playing so far back. He's going to try for the stun, but Poom going to walk in for his own and knows that he can keep Luger safe. So I think really well played. Gets a second on the cross because they're going to win that trade. Really intelligent using both charges really smartly there. And and using the information they have to waste more time for Santorin. Uh, Poom with the uh, Q charges ready for him. Volley Bear doesn't have a lot of big surprise moves. Nice one. It's basically only the flash. He really wants one. They think he's already recalled and he indeed has. So pretty good damage there. And CLG really playing to the edge. I mean, certainly a much stronger two-on-two -two with the Moomoo and Callista this early on. And Contract goes, I know oh, your Wolf Timer. I love I it. I killed them he, myself. Yeah, and he stole the Gromp too with the Smite. So he has all these jungle timers and he makes use of the Callista lane. CLG had just been playing so intelligently. Let's see if they can actually get away with this one though. Contract, nice it's still a 450 Smite, so they're still kind of low. Ooh. Got it, he got it. I saw the 90 yeah. gold on his head. Contract gets another Gromp. And Centaurin smited, right? Like, you could, you could track that, so he knows that you even tried to get this one, you didn't get it. So, Contracts, of course, even farther ahead. And it is rough stuff here. So, so far, Dokla feeling very good about his lane. No jungle interaction whatsoever, and it has looked very in our favorite so far. This is, yeah, oh my god, I'm just so impressed. Uh, like, it's actually a big jungle diff. I know every, every jungler loves playing with winning bottom lanes, but again, to get this much out of it, it's not like, oh, you automatically destroy a volley bear this hard just with a pushing lane yeah. uh, to help you go for invades. Really nicely coordinated by this team. Okay. All of this focus, though, on uh, on the early jungle is one thing. It does mean that you're not as scared of the early volley bear entering these lanes, like we talked about, really trying to snowball, uh, you know, one of the solo laners. But also, it means Contracts is going to get to a very quick level six for this Wukong, and so you can have that big Wukong level six play, uh, and also sets them up up for a pretty strong Rift Herald uh, attempt that they can kind of go for here. The only drawback is, of course, you have Corky mid, which is one of the very weakest for Rift Herald fights. So CLG just spam back pinged Bullabear on his Krugs with no wards on Krugs. They knew exactly his location, as, as far as I can tell anyway, with no it's, wards on it. So here, it's really easy to do this, but yeah, let's let's illustrate this. You know that you just took Gromp here, so Volibear has to have gone here. So then you know that he's just going to continue clearing up this way, and they have the timer to know when he's uh, approximately yeah. calling for those Krugs. But that's the sort of tracking um, that this repeat invade is going to get you for yeah. CLG. It's kind of impressive. They saw him 30 seconds ago and, and exactly pinged on his model in Fog of War. Impressive up here. Core JJ ignited, running for his life and first blood at TLG. Not perturbed. The flash for contracts will not find his mark, but on the board are CLG looking for their first dragon soon. Amumu support, baby. It's back in a big way. 58 extra damage on the ultimate. 
a lot less mana for the Qs to spam out as well, and Contract's playing to that bottom lane. See if he can actually get out. Mid diff though, mid rotating first. Yeah, it could be a danger because Bjergsen is here. They find the stun. Ult's going to pop. Be careful. He can do pretty good damage. And it's going to be Contract getting lower and lower and lower and down. Bjergsen is there. Pella Fox is not. And TL are back on the board. That's why we mentioned the Corky. Definitely weak early in the lane. And CLG hovering around the fog of war of this corner here. They, they knew he was coming over. Like, they called it on this corner. And yet... They still, you know, you're going to take so much damage jumping into the Swain. This champion is so good against all these low range, uh, you know, champions on the side of CLG. It's one of the things we cautioned against CLG in Champ Select. Uh, very smart Swain pick and Bjergsen it makes them pay for it. He bails Santorin out. They defend their blue quadrant, plus they get the dragon. So Team Liquid, a much needed big play from Bjergsen gets them back into the game. Here's another look at the replay, the, the gank on bottom. Poom walking up as Contracts wraps around the corner. He hits Q1 onto the Rakan. He then follows it up here, Q2 onto the Zeri, and the Ignite onto Core JJ finished off the kill as Contracts flashed for the Q. And that flash yeah. is critical because it means he dies here. CLG looking like, oh yeah, we know Bjergsen's coming around the corner. Let's jump on him. Oh great, we jumped on a Swain. Uh, <laughs> we have yeah. no extra damage and they die. Oh, well done by Bjergsen. That was uh, actually Luger in the replay who flashed for a bit more and couldn't quite find a slow to look for the second kill in the hunt. And then but we still see CLG feeling good. Top lane pressure is there. Now the farm is very good for Whippo. So as much as he might be under his turret, he, I don't believe, has lost a single plate. He's actually winning in farm. So you might have pressure, but it's not being used except for now when the Herald finally is being claimed. So that is one thing on the board. But otherwise, as much as it may have looked good on paper or on the screen, Whippo is laning just fine up here. Big Dokes versus Wide Whippo. Indeed. What happens when they crash? It's a pretty even it, lane, that it, turns yeah, out. Yeah, it's pretty even lane, it turns out, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's an important question of, you know, like, is it better to be, like... I don't know where to go with this one. I was going to say, is it better to be tall or wide, but it just feels like it's, no one asked that. So we got nothing. <laughs> I'm glad that you literally just... Nobody asked it yourself. Yeah. Let's go! Look, he's, hey! he's growing! Nobody asked, Freak. <laughs> Nobody asked. <laughs> Ah, uh, the evolution. Still answered. <laughs> Still answered. All right, Hansel actually cancels it back here. Okay, so we'll see what else they can do with this bottom line. CLG, um, they hit a little bit of a speed bump, and honestly, it was a pretty... Actually, maybe it's a medium-sized speed bump there with the uh, Bjergsen rotation getting Team Liquid right. way back into this game. Sansorin's still behind in CS, you know, gonna feel a little bit of the pain there, but um, not not quite as bad being able to pick up the dragon for themselves. Now they're not scared about this Callista lane snowballing dragons to his super early soul. Ooh, wow, goes pretty hard for this one. Tries to get over it, gets away from the pullback. This should be a pretty easy stomp into the wall. He's gonna cast it. There's the stun, but be careful because Santorin's here and even the Swain helped. So Dokla, I am sorry, but you are the small man in the top lane. Weppo gets that little bit wider. Yeah, why Weppo's got more friends? That's the difference for top lane. Yep. That's really what matters. How many extra people can you bring? And it actually matters every time I see one of those Swain eyeballs hit. That's on your screen now. Um, it, it, to me, I just think 12 health. Mm. Every time Swain's going to hit people with abilities, I got like mad at my teammates that are lazily not walking out of them. They're like, oh, damage doesn't, it doesn't do that much damage or whatever. Yeah, but it gives him permanent health. It's very frustrating. Um, Bjergsen definitely playing the Swain in these early stages quite well for the team. We'll see about the biggest points, though, is when we transition to these mid-game fights. Because the Swain is kind of the crux here, uh, the middleman for these team fights. He's going to create so much zoning and really try and shut down the Kalista, Wukong, you know, this all-in kind of uh, section from the CLG that we talked about. And it's up to Power Fox to make value out of Corky. Um, you're gonna have to throw out a lot of rockets early on. Right now, you got a bit of damage there, but they're not gonna find the flash. knockup. Looks like he was rooted or pulled in time. Yeah, Bjergsen saves everything. No ult, no flash, nothing. Contracts doesn't even smite or ult. Damage, uh, damage positive for CLG, but that's about it. And Contracts comes back down the river over a ward. He's core, core jumps away. Okay, fine. <laughs> Definitely knows he's spotted. Like, All right, whatever. We're going to walk away from this one. Bjergsen has TP'd back in the lane to keep the pressure going. One minute and ten. It's a long countdown. Don't start it yet, guys. Um, <laughs> until the dragon comes up. Counting stream. <laughs> That's what we will become. Yeah, we had a barony earlier. Why not have some counts? I think it's we can just keep it going with uh, medieval land ownership. Okay. <laughs> Sounds important. Always trying to tie something together. I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I should not, probably.
Um, <laughs> okay, let's move forward. No one liked that one. <laughs> I was actually proud of not as the pun on that one. Okay. Same, same. Yeah, uh, I All appreciate right. that. We do have 37 seconds left on the dragon, but like we said, since the early one was taken by Team Liquid, not as critical uh, here for the stacking. And we already see after this reset too, they're heading right back down towards it. Core JJ heads down mid lane for the possibility of uh, you know one of these counter plays, but package picked up by Pal Fox in time for yeah. this dragon. That should be enough to force it for them, I feel like. Um, it's, it's so powerful. We do have a big difference for AD carries, though. The shield bow has picked up by Hansama already. Where's Blabber? Where is he? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's take a look at this package, though. They're blind yeah. for CLG. Okay, they get control back here, though. Nice Q to get the brush vision, get rid of a ward there, okay. And the river now belongs in. The Herald Charge makes on some walk into bot lane. They could try to burn it, but remember the timer is ticking down. Probably under 30 seconds left on package. Panic will start. Aatrox already on the way down. Dokla does not have unleashed teleport. Have to go to a tower, which yeah. means CLG are poised to give this because no, they're gonna Whippo's have to bring going back, back up. Whippo's going back up. It's fine. Ow. They've got Ren, they've got Smite. They've still got package. They find a stun. Core JJ to find the charm. 900 health. Here comes the smite. Still he claims it with a team fight. Maybe what they want. One for zero. Contrax finds a knock, but he's exhausted. He's running out of health, and he will drop a one for one. Plus the Drake. Team Liquid getting more. The flash. Oh, good sidestep. Gets away. A slow, not bad. A flash force out of Power Fox now as well. Dokla may get a turret plate, but Team Liquid, they're going to find themselves a dragon again. Santorin with the yoink. He's getting revenge for all of this. Invade pressure he sustained early on in this game. Team Liquid get number two for themselves in the face of the package. Again, this Swain will create so much space for you. I actually love this champion for early dragon fights. Um, Bjergsen able to walk up, force a couple of extra flashes as they walk away. Yeah. I'm also glad by the way people got off of Mandate Swain. I was never a fan. We didn't get to see it at really any in the LCS where all Leandries. I think uh -huh. it's a far better build. I thought it was pretty neat when I saw him constantly proccing it and getting the perma 20% move speed running around, but yeah. the win rate the win rate just wasn't there. You, I mean, basically, you just can't make any plays yourself. Like, I understand, like, oh, it's cute, I can do a thing, but, like, Swain's a mid laner. If you can't 1v1 anyone, you just have negative pressure in whatever lane he's in. Yeah. Because Mandate I'll... does not do anything by itself. Also, this game, you get a lot of value out of the Leandries because yeah. these three champs are all just going to get melted down, burned down, um, and they do have uh, a lot of armor, so really, really good value out of Leandries from him. And here's another look at it. Santorin gets in. Contracts is actually ulting away. That was yeah. out of smite range. So he was already out of there, basically. Um, gave up on the smite fight. His smite was used, it looks like. Sometimes the observer uh, icon there can be misleading, um, but I think he used a smite, red smite on a champion to try and go for the fight. Uh, and CLG end up losing extra champions as well as losing the dragon there. And now Hansama finds first turret solo gold down there, so everything is now coming up. Team Liquid, a thousand gold lead, double drakes to zero. Maybe second Herald goes CLG's way to get one of those turrets cracked. I mean, bot lane would die to the charge. Top lane has lost about 800 health. Smite finally can be claimed, but will the Herald? I don't think it's worth dying for the no, Herald no, pickup. No, no, so no, no, no. Dokla, so he may get away from the snapback. Although now they've got enough map control that they've got time to claim this one. Will be grabbed by Contracts. Good job by CLG to follow in and can turn some of the gold back with late charge. Yeah, and the whole reason they can move up there and, and force Team Liquid off, Hansama, it just recalled from, uh, is back in base. So can't get there. So Team Liquid, no, all right, fine. You can go pick up the eye. We don't have the, the numbers here to hold you off. But aside from that, Team Liquid have bounced back so nicely from the early jungle pressure. Uh, the early jungle diff definitely going in CLG's favor, but Team Liquid, Right back on top. 1.1 thousand, or excuse me, uh, gold lead for themselves. Two yeah. dragons as well. So, Santorin, it's fine. He's level nine now on Bolivar as well. And then Dokla has flash and hop. Not going to be ganked, but Team Liquid have enough pressure that this is going to be everything they want. They could definitely push very hard for the tower. I think if they wanted to you know, have the Volibear attack and get more damage done, Hansama could jump the wall. He'd go for this as well. Of course, the tower down a little bit faster. They're finally going to bring him over, but without a wave, you'll have to wait. I think a small miss opportunity. I mean, it depends on if you will have timing pressure to make your next rotation, because otherwise you can deny another minion wave um, as the tower is falling too. And it looks like mid lane is pretty well defended, so 
everybody's got time. Yeah. Kyle Fox does get the bottom one. I guess they, it's a cannon wave, so they don't even lose any, uh, deny any more minions either. Now here we go, though. As Dokla walks back up through several wards, sees Santorin's on this, and unless he really misses the smite, this is always going to go to him. So he can try, but it's not going to happen. Wave will be pushed in. Now, bot lane was pushed all the way up to tier two. The wave is there for the Swain, though. Should have no problem. But mid, COD still playing pressure, right? They've taken two towers to one so far in this one. They brought the gold back to equal. Jelly may... They should get the eye, yeah. Pretty but. even state here, then, moving towards our third dragon. 55 seconds on this one. The pressure now actually siren them out against CLG when we figured with the Callista lane, they might be the ones in all of the jungle invades. Palfox, so he's got to get out of there. He's in so much danger. There's no way you get through this one. He can deal some damage to Greek, but he is going to drop. Knocked into the air. Corky should die. They hand the kill. They stop DPS. Bjergsen through in a gold richer. And I kind of like delaying there. You know, you've got so much time. Just delay and... Palfox knows he's dead. He can't get out. But if you delay longer, then he can't get there for the dragon. Uh, if you a couple more seconds, even I would have been even better. Uh, if they just kind of stared at him and watched right. him try and auto attack. Oh no, him. a little bit more right now. He's going to be able to get into stealth. Gets a bit of a health bar back. Knock up into the air, but be careful because Hansama's on the chase. Hansama wants it, can't quite get it. But Contracts now has no HP for the Dragon, so number three should easily belong to Team Liquid. Yeah. CLG once again will try to cross that. They will get their final turret kill. We count down as TL counts up to three as this Drake is a formality. Yes, sir. Okay, so CLG, nothing they can really get on the other side of the map either. Just really, really big power moves from Team Liquid. That pick onto Power Fox, setting themselves up, and then just for good measure, making sure. All right, Contracts also in base and no flash. So uh, very, very, very good preemptive plays there for Team Liquid. A lot of these things, too, we've been talking about, the setup plays before the objective arrives, trying to trade out lower cooldowns before, you know, a dragon or a Rift Herald fight or something you know that you're going to want to go for or come up so that you can burn flashes. Because those those things, the five-minute cooldown, so easy to trade out lower cooldown abilities for. Ooh, this is slow. Nice one there. Yeah. Oh, wow. Poom actually gets the rest way in. Luger could have actually stayed in a range and fought for a bit more. Didn't realize that Poom's going to land that one. But be careful. Still gets slowed up, and this could be all the danger. Pops the ult, wants to run. Callista ult is still up. They can hold for a while. And if they ever sell out for it, this is the time. Wait, is it down? OK, there we go. Pulls him really, really late. And out he goes. Yeah, they wanted to get the most out of it. They're hoping, OK, maybe someone's trying to try and flash for me. But both teams know Callista ult is there. So not a lot of extra stuff used for Team Liquid to force that one out. Whiplow does use the Aatrox ult. Oh, Core nearly finds an engage. Wants to go in. There's a the charm. It could be any night. No, Poom's going to stay alive. Gets right back out, but nearly dead. Full of air in for the dive. Only a slow, though. Not much more. Luger able to put a couple of shots in, but not any more. TL do not find the fight they want. Baron coming up soon, but will not be started for a while. Yeah, that one's kind of interesting. Sometimes Volibear, and you're trying to use your ult just for a gap closer to get up there before it's done. But if you save it and you wait for the rest of your team and then use it on the tower, maybe CLG stick around. Looks like they're going to get the tower regardless. Kyle Fox, the only one here to even try and defend. Yep. But if the Valkyrie does so, Core JJ. Indeed, read the mind of Palafox, forcing his flash away, but Teleport comes in for Dokla. Mininar only for a short moment. He will be Mega, could go for a flash play. Bjergsen gets some help from the Zeri. Dokla gets low, there's the Transform. Has enough help, flashes away, as in comes Contracts. Only finds one, the Wukong falls. CLG just feel disjointed. One flashes out as one dives in, and it's a one for one. Looking again now for Poom. Does not have his ulti. Megan are going to whiff now as well. And be careful because they're still on the chase. Hansama pops the shield, but Poom dives in to kill himself in delivery. Courtesy of Bjergsen. Yoinks him in. Two for zero on the back half. Team Liquid get everything. Yeah, that was one too many bandage tosses. And Team Liquid, now they get their rewards. They got all the kills here. Tower going to go down as well. Big Dokes is a mini Dokes right now, so he's not going to be able to do much either. Nope. But it is going to be a reset and a two-minute timer until Dragon Soul and Mountain Soul, by the way, almost lock CLG out. You can you can kind of block the first Corky rocket. Sure, he's on Romano Ludens now, but uh, that's just going to be such a big deal. Yeah. So let's take a look at it. Trying to corral Palafox here. W over the wall, trying to zone him back towards Core JJ. They get the flash out. Then with the teleport in, CLG were hoping it was going to be an overcommitment between towers, but Team Luka kited. And look at how quickly they can burn Dokla with all this magic damage with the Leandri's burn going off. Swain hits everything. Then it's the counter engage from Poom and Contracts as Dokla flashes out. 
But since Contract uses Flash and W to get in on Wukong and get that trade one for one is a decent trade, but it means he goes down. Boom then re-engages. They're trying to get something out of the last of the Meganar. But Team Liquid from this point, it, it was already lost. Team Liquid won that fight. CLG had to go back to base. Boom, one too many bandage tosses. Also, uh, baits a little bit in there. The teammate Luger yeah. goes down in addition. And Team Liquid are very happy with that one. Again, Bjergsen, the frontline Swain here, does so much damage with the combo, this dream combo. Your rally's in now, slowing everyone. You're burning them down with Leandries. You have so much space, and the only person with range on CLG that uh, actually can ignore the Swain is Palafox on the Corky, who finally now has two items, but uh, yeah. really needs to get work done before they have these team fights to have the value. If, you, if you're not getting a bunch of rockets into Team Liquid members before these fights break out, then the Swain is simply doing way more than you because the Swain doesn't counter the Corky but counters basically everybody else on your team. And we're out of time. Now two items may be through on most players. So the items fights look okay, but Dragon Soul coming up soon. Contract slowed heavily. Here comes the dive. Has to ult and flash. So now he has no cooldowns and there is no way CLG can contest. All it took was a Volibear ultimate. It's looking like a Team Liquid soul to me, Free. Yeah, and Contract just hit his entire keyboard. Yep, good pick there from Team Liquid. Again, forcing out Big cooldowns before the dragon. A minute ahead, guess what? They win. They don't have to win the dragon fight because they win the cooldown war before the dragon fight. CLG trying to make them go to the other side of yeah. the map here. Definitely hope there's kind of a mistake. They're going to go ahead and say, all right, go for broke on Baron. Maybe you can fight us on our terms with vision. This dragon, I'm sorry, crowd, is not going to be started when it spawns. Wow, here we go. <laughs> dragon is on the map and boom! Couple of knockbacks, flip with the target, but he's so tanky. Flashes in for a bunch, does a whole ton of damage, and Wukong gonna drop now as well. Two to zero, make it a third. Luger's gonna fall, a double kill for the Swain, and that's gonna be number four. Goodbye. Palafox can look at his mid lane wave, knock down some minions, but Team Liquid can choose whatever they want on this one. Five and two, destined to be their record. Palafox just says, you know what? You can have it. Take the Bud Light Ace. Down goes the last member of CLG, and Team Liquid. Get you a team that can kill objectives on both sides of the map. Is that the saddest of Mumu and Gage you've ever seen? <laughs> yeah. Q in, just, and you know he, he knows he's going to insta die anyways, too. There's no Kalista ult to, you know, doesn't pull him back out. Um, and you're engaging into a super, super fed Swain here for Bjergsen. So it's like, you know that's a one way ticket. Um, if Kalista's not going to yoink you back out, he instantly goes down. And Team Liquid, no, they've got the run of the map. Dragon Soul plus Baron, and there's they just they're gonna dominate from this point on out. Unless it really has to be like several rockets hitting in a row beforehand to get a massive advantage. Because uh, look at this, even with the package over the top, Whippo on the other side uh, is is a giant front line as well, and Hansama is never under any any threat at all. The Zeri is free firing the whole time, has a dream front line to run behind here and Powell Fox even gets caught for the last one there. He wants the wave so they don't lose, I think, mid specifically, but yeah. then uh, I don't know if Valk was down, but he's like, eh, I got no way out. Okay, goes to the wave specifically, try to save the mid turret. Uh, does so for now, but with Baron on, it's going to be a lot. Whipple wants in again. They find this one of contracts. Knock up there as well. Finally, blown away. Luger, yeah, stunned. He's in a bad spot. They're going to get the knock up. They're going to get the kill. Oh, not quite yet. There's the flash follow. And Centaur indeed knocks him down. Goodbye to the Callista. Gets back to the mid lane. A little bit low help, but eh, honestly, he'll be fine. You've heard of the flash bear slap. That was the flash bear bite. Yeah. Volibear bear Centaur with his uh, charged up W on the Callista finishes him off. Team Liquid are just rolling in it now. And they're going to keep on going. Cool. No click. Get some gold on the other side of the map. And the CLG will find their third turret kill and a single objective bounty. But they are down 6,000 gold as Red Bull Baron Power Flash. Not huge, thanks to the fact that there were bounties on the turrets, but yeah. uh, they're going to start growing it now. I think this is a much needed, you know, strong victory from Team Liquid, too. With the last, uh, you know, few games that they have had uh, not playing up to their own standards, 
And with the game, the way this game started with such a good, you know, you know invade advantage there for CLG, uh, it was really up to Team Liquid to turn it back around. Okay, now four man stun, huge damage to the Wukong as well. They don't quite get the Volo Bear staying alive and swaying to the front line. So contracts, he's out. Luger, he's out. And then here comes the rest of it. Boom's gonna drop. And it was a nice attempt, but it was too little, too late. The first fight I have seen where CLG was coordinated, and it was a six thousand gold deficit. Would have liked to see that 15 minutes ago. But it's gonna be Team Liquid now walking over the game. Dragon Soul, Baron Buff, 17 to four in kills, and they should be able to go for next if they want and they're gonna go walk up now still 50 seconds of the respawns corky basically left alone and it's gonna happen down go the final turrets palafox knows he'll keep this kda safe for now but as the turrets fall team liquid take the win five and two team liquid in second place huge huge game for them let's take a look at it. any more kills no no <laughs> just the nexus the die Big stuff there. I have to say, Bjergsen was the turning point. He was a, he was a really good draft pick, yes. The Swain, after you see the low-range Kalista, the all-in from Wukong, you feel like it's going to have at least dive elements to the opponent team. So it's a huge, really good pick uh, to get the Swain. But then his move over on the blue buff defense and first dragon take to get Santorin yeah. back into the game. Great stuff from him. Bjerg is going to be my vote for player of that one. Yeah, I agree. And it came down to him ultimately because CLG had such a good play. And, and the first seven minutes were really beautiful. The invade was really nice. Late invade with double Amumu stun. Like, you get control of that one. And three camps to one for contracts. Like, broke his ankles. A lot of good stuff. But Bjergsen came down for the blue buff defense in seven minutes. And from then on, I'm sorry. It was just too much. The, the mid difference was big. He picked an early spiking champion, took over the fights. And, and every single battle was just, sorry, TL stronger now. Yeah, really, really good stuff from Team Liquid playing as a team, grouping around, getting maximum value out of the counter-engage elements that they have, these, yeah. these team fights, uh, forcing in big scenarios. And again, picking people off before the dragon even arrives in so many of these times. Um, there are so many yeah. moments where they get a key pick ahead of time and just uh, get all these extra cooldowns out. Here's another look at that engage. Amumu ult on a bunch of them. Contracts goes in for the follow-up, but Team Liquid have so much money, they can't even kill their uh, the lowest target there. The Santorin doesn't even feel it. Uh, not to mention Flippo and Bjergsen. The Aatrox Swain permanently helps yep. leeching frontline, doing a ton of damage as well. Moves right up, and they basically shrug off that hard engage. They're like, great. Yeah, you're in here with us now. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that fight from CLG, I'll, I'll bring the point back up because I think it's really relevant. Like that fight would have worked 50 minutes ago when yeah. they weren't down 6k gold. The problem was they never got the format of Mumu ultimate. Like I think about the one in mid lane where he gets attacked and he's like, I'm going to burn my ulti and then Kalist out. Just Kalista out and save it because you need that for the mid fight. Like that mid fight was winnable with Curse of Sad Mummy. I, it yeah. would have been closer at the very least instead they, of like having nothing. Yeah, it, it was. It is a weird choice to save Callisto instead of saving the offensive possibility yeah, which of you removal. Need. Yeah, like that's the one too. So. Callisto ult early, my friends. We saw multiple times. Dying. No Callisto ult. Yeah. Safety first. Safety first. Good call from Kobe here. Now after the break, Team Liquid's Core JJ and Hans Sama are joining the safe from Analyst Desk. We'll see you there. What if respawning was refreshing? Here's to the round between rounds. This game is rigged. This game is out to get me. I call it the wheel. Eh, I don't think so. This is a miss. Brother David, behold! It's a fork! I got ten forks right here, baby! <laughs> a toilet? We're not animals! We go outside like humans! Hancock! No king! The people shall have the right to vote! Even the stupid ones? Yes! Ah. No. Edison, can I be honest with you? It stinks. Nobody's gone to the moon, ever! Why not? It's far! It's too far! It's far! Let me die, Put up the music, this! Fuck a car! Like I was saying, it's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, 
I don't think so. And I'm never wrong about this stuff. Never. <laughs>